Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another uh, live developer Q&A. Uh, my name is Josh Allen, a.k.a. Community Manager Lore, and here today I'm joined by Matt Goss, a lead game designer uh, on World of Warcraft. Matt, thanks so much for being here. Oh, of course. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we haven't, uh, obviously, people have seen you at, like BlizzCon and such in the past. We haven't had you on a live Q&A in the past. Could you um, just take a second and sort of explain what your role is on the team because we're like we're talking about uh primarily like itemization and gear and such today but sure. you're involved in a lot more than just just that yeah i, I uh you know I, I oversee a lot of the systems and, and wow i'm kind of doing a lot of different things so mm -hmm. items items are under my uh under my purview also classes boost uh just new player experience ui like those kinds of things are where i'm you cool know, where i spend my time all right, cool. So we do have, like I said, we have a lot of uh, sort of itemization-focused questions sure. uh, lined up today. We have a couple in here, just so the people are aware. We've got a couple in here that we may get to that are not quite so itemization-focused, but That's great. because Matt's uh, involved in so many different things, we figured we'd throw them in anyway. Yeah. Uh, but let's get started. First question for today comes from Melaroy, who asked, uh, do you feel that the adjustments to secondary stats in 715 achieved your goals? So obviously there were a lot of changes um, to the way that secondary stats work in 715. Um, how happy is the team overall with where things ended up? So I think I think looking back at, you know, Legion launch, we had kind of, we saw the main thing we were looking at is players that were doing more difficult content weren't feeling rewarded for doing it. So they would do, you know, they get an item that was 59 levels higher than what they had before. And they weren't, you know, they, they weren't feeling like that was a, a reasonable upgrade because the stat imbalances or maybe secondary stats were becoming more popular or excuse me more powerful than primary stats mm. um, so we actually took a kind of a three approach to it we wanted to kind of even out what secondary stats people wanted so that if you're worst secondary stat and your best secondary stat they were they were more even right and they weren't so far off uh, you still have a preference obviously but yeah. it wasn't like as massive yeah and we were trying not to change your preference mm. um, we didn't succeed in you know every single uh, spec having that, but sure. uh, we, that was a that was a goal that we set out. Uh, we also knew jewelry was a, a special exception because jewelry was a there is no primary to back mm. it up, and primary ends up driving. So you know when you say primary, I mean you know strength, agility, intellect. There wasn't that to actually make the item level matter. Mm. So what ended up happening was jewelry had bigger swings in you know an item level. Uh, 30 lower item could be better just because it has your secondary stats on it. Right. Um, and then just looking at, you know, strength compared to those secondary stats. So, you know, and what that ratio was, that was, that seemed to be off uh, for us for a numerous, numerous reasons that I don't want to go into today. <laughs> I can talk about that. I'll get a whiteboard and some math and things. So it'd be great. Um, some graph paper. Yeah. Some graph. I don't have any, uh, but uh, so what we did in 715 is we, we tried to address all three of those problems mm. and, I, I think that overall we are we are happier than we were. Mm. You know, we do see that uh, we did narrow the gap between lower item level items and higher level items, where higher items generally are better. Uh, there are a few cases that we're still looking at that we're not completely happy with. Um, okay, but I think overall we 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 did as much as I think we could do comfortably without having to you know do more drastic changes that that would be a kind of a strange thing to do in the middle of a of a patch. Yeah, like it's it's good to sort of. Make some uh, make almost incremental changes if yeah. necessary. It's better to not swing the pendulum too far in the other direction. And yeah. now, like, okay, if it's one item level difference, not that that ever actually happens. Yeah, it's suddenly the better item no matter what. Like, it's still good to have some sort of choice in there. Yeah, especially when you have people who you know their banks are full of items because they don't know what to wear, mm. and then we're saying, hey, we're going to make changes. That's a scary thing. It's like, well, I yeah. can't get rid of anything because this could be better. And that's yeah, it's not. Again, I know we've had we've had cases of that in Legion where that's ha we've. Um, we've done that, but it's not what we want to do. We really would like yeah. to avoid as much as we can. Yeah. No, that's cool. Uh, always better to be cautious when when, when possible, yeah. obviously. Um, so moving on, next question is uh, on a similar token from Krabbit, but it asks something that a lot of people were asking. Uh, he, he or she asked, uh, despite changes to secondary stat weighting, uh, lower eye level, well-itemized pieces outperform higher eye level, poorly itemized pieces. Is a reintroduction of reforging being considered? And if not, why not? So we were kind of just talking about uh, the secondary stat weighting changes. Um, but reforging, that's something that lots of people have been asking about. I, I, I feel like this is probably the fourth or fifth time that we've actually pulled this up on a Q&A. Yeah. Um, but now that we've got you here specifically talking about itemization and based on all of this stuff that's going on with the secondary stat weighting, what's going on with reforging? So we, we talked about 
you know, our first goal was let's get let's get items into a better shape so that we don't have to worry about secondary stats as much. Uh, I think one of the things that we look at, we look kind of back at Legion and we realize that, um, and we, we get a lot of this feedback from, from you guys too, like uh, we, we didn't give enough player agency to mm. itemization. There wasn't enough uh, decision-making that a player could have to actually make themselves better or, or feel like they're getting better. And reforging is is an option to that. Like that is a that is a we knew what it was, we knew how it worked, and it essentially makes lets players look at bad items and they can make them better mm. um, through a process. Um, we don't like reforging as the as the solution to that problem. We we definitely recognize it as a problem. Uh, reforging, I remember back in the day, and I think I talked about this at BlizzCon at mm. the time when we removed it. Uh, it was it was this feeling of every single item. Actually, every upgrade became became more difficult to figure out because you had to look at an item and say, "Well, if I reforge mastery yeah. to crit, maybe this is better." But it actually muddies that you know what is considered an upgrade, um, and you end up making like sweeping changes to every single piece when that happens as well. Yes. Even without uh, hidden expertise being a thing anymore, like you still have points where haste becomes more useful than versatility and vice versa. Yeah, so totally. If you get a piece of gear, you're still going to need to reforge several pieces to yeah. accommodate it. Yeah, and this would also give you another reason to kind of break up the flow of your raid. You mm. just you would get an item and say, wait, i got to reforge this to, to, to crit, go back to town, do that, and come back. And yeah. just... It it feels like a it is a is definitely solves the player agency problem, but I think it solves it in, in a way that's not ideal for for the game. I think it actually ends up causing more problems than helps. So, but I the player agency we need to look at and we need yeah. to find a way to make that to make cool. that better. Yeah, just something that players can do that says I'm going to improve my gearing um, in a way that isn't a hope that a better item drops for yep. me. Yep. Cool. All right. Uh, next question from Stardon who asked. Uh, when designing, when designing, excuse me, secondary stats on items, do you look at class and spec representation and how good or bad these stats are for them? Uh, so I'm not quite sure mm -hmm. what the class and spec representation part of this question actually means. Maybe you have a better idea than I, than I, I do. I think but. what it's referring to is, you know, when you when we make a when we make an item that's for a class or a spec, hmm. do we do we actually try to optimize that piece for right. that for that uh, for that player? And I think it depends on, you know, we're looking at kind of have two different versions of gear right now. We have gear that is usable across all classes with, you know, you have a plate piece that has sure. strength, uh, crit mastery on it, or you have your set pieces or you have your legendaries. Um, we do look at, at stats for pieces that are more tailored to you, but we don't optimize them against your stats. And part of that is, you know, when, when you have set pieces, you have five or six and mm -hmm. you know, six pieces you can work with in, in tier 20. Uh, and we kind of we want to give you a little bit of choice on which pieces you think are better. So if you get a piece that is the stats that you want, well that that could replace one of your set pieces where you still have your your four set bonus. Um, same thing with with legendaries. It's another it's just another layer to, to look right. at. Uh, but we we do look at it. It's you know it's just a matter of how much we um, you know how much we do with it. Yeah, it's possibly worth mentioning as well. Um, just because I see it a lot in the community, but not from the top theory crafters that are doing like the determining what stats are best sort of thing. Like most of the top theory crafters will tell you, figure out what your stat weights are because they change depending on where your gear actually is. Yes. So sometimes yep. just because it has haste on it, there's a point where, like say you don't, if you're a spec that doesn't like haste, for example, there's a point where that haste actually becomes really valuable. Yep. Um, and having a little bit of it on your gear is actually a good thing. Yep. Um, so it's, it's good to put a mix of stats around so that's not every single item has the same two stats on it. It also gives you, yeah, it just gives you more choice too. Like mm -hmm. if you want to, if you want to take more versatility, if your raid's having problems in a specific fight, like sure. that's an option that you have. Yeah. A uh, question here from Can of Spinach who asked, seeing as tertiary stats are so weak, they're basically ignored. Uh, are there any plans to adjust them in the near future? So tertiary stats, things like um, uh, avoidance, uh, speed, uh, stuff like that. Yep. Leech. Yeah. Uh, so we were actually looking at this this week, um, and I, I think it's like first the, the the role of tertiary stats is almost like that bonus. That's if you're looking at two pieces that are that are very similar, this might be the thing that kind of overcomes that. But we don't ever really want it to come to be. I want to take this piece over this higher item level piece because sure. it is more is meant to be more utility. It's kind um, of a, like a, just a nice extra perk. For yeah. Item sometimes. Okay. Yeah. It's like it's just a reason that this item is different than this item. Mm. Um, that being said. Uh, we buffed them. I remember in Warlords, we we took a, a pass on tertiaries and we kind of left them at that level. And I think 
the actual perception of where sec- or where tertiaries are tends towards that more than mm. the actual reality of how powerful they are, which is I th- okay. the, what we were talking about this week was avoidance is something like 8 eight to 10% damage reduction just for one piece with avoidance on it. Oh, wow. Uh, which again, for it's for AEs only. So sure. it's only when you're taking AE damage. Which for a lot of you know DPS classes, that's that's what all they do. So yeah. that's that's a pretty big bonus. Um, speed is also very useful. Mm. Um, Leech is very good, and it scales with your damage. So it's actually getting better as the expansion goes on. So I think they're, I'd, I'd like to say they're like sneaky good right now, mm. and we're we're borderline. I'm not saying we're changing anything, but you sure. know it's borderline. Like well. I think when people realize how good they are, they might swing things in a, mm. in a direction. Um, some classes actually do really like them, uh, but already, but yeah, they'll catch on. And so it's so- <clears throat> excuse me. It sounds like the intention is almost for them to be kind of exactly what a uh, can of spinach was asking here. Is like, yeah, you can just kind of ignore them, but if you have a piece, if you have a, a, a 900 piece with haste and mastery and a 900 piece with haste and mastery and indestructible on it. Yeah, you're gonna want the indestructible yeah. one anyway because it's just an extra perk. Yep, just a perk. Yep. Cool. Uh, question from uh, Illyria, I think is how I would pronounce this. Uh, who asked? Oh, this is a big one. Who asked? Uh, how would you have <laughs> implemented Legion legendaries in hindsight? Uh, E.g., would you only have created utility legendaries, or would you have power legendaries tied to class campaigns? So just kind of a, uh, I guess, kind of a broad question here. Of mm-hmm. there's a couple of suggestions, obviously, but the question of in hindsight, 2020 vision, going back, if uh, if you could go back in time and uh, tell Matt yeah. from a year ago, this is what you should do with legendaries. What would what would you do? Yeah, I think I think the first thing I'd say, and this is this is a weird one because I think we did I think we did the right thing, but going like knowing going back in time, I think we made them a little bit more uh, uh, plentiful. Like I think mm. they would have dropped a little bit more, um, and we intentionally, and I say that knowing that that's what everybody's been telling us for a long time sure. but we when when we were designing the system it's it's very hard to tune across our entire game like we've never really done this before where it's mm. like an item can come from every source whether you're running dungeons or whether you're running uh you're doing world quests like you're you're doing all these things like we didn't really know how much we needed to tune against and so we we actually we we did try to hit a little bit low just in case because we knew we could go up Sure. We, yeah. have, we would have a hard time coming back. Yeah. Um, so I think, but but knowing what we know now, we 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 knew the point we'd want to yeah. hit, and we would have like we obviously we we can't go back in time and change the tuning back then to what we had, we know it should be now. But right. Um, that was that was uh, that was one thing. And like you say, it's it's one of those we kind of mentioned this earlier as well. It's one of those yeah. situations where it's kind of good to be a little bit cautious, even if it ends up being the 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 wrong choice in hindsight. Yeah. Because like you say, like if we had accidentally gone too high on the the drop rate and so it's like oh god first couple of weeks of legion these things are dropping like crazy we need to pull this down yep and then that that feels kind of bad because then it's like okay everybody who didn't get one in that period of time would be yep um, exactly left behind so yeah. so I, th- I think that's one i think that's one point and i think the other point is we would and we're doing this you know through through patches we're, we're slowly narrowing this gap but i think the power gap between utility legendaries and mm. uh, power legendaries was too high um, and we, we had talked about it a lot internally, uh, at the time of like, whether this was something we wanted to do. And we, a lot of the utility legendaries we think are really cool. <laughs> like we mm. really like their designs and we, um, we want people to like them too. And, you know, the number of stories I've heard about somebody who gets a legendary, you know, it's kind of the two stories, right? Somebody mm. hits a legendary, it's not a power legendary and they're immediately mad. Yeah. Or there's the other guy who gets a utility legendary, thinks it's really cool mm. and then goes to you know, their, their website to find out which mm. legendaries are best and realize, oh no, this one doesn't have any power. It's bad. Yeah. Even though I love its effect. I love, you know, having two more charges of heroic leap. That's so much fun. Yeah. Uh, well now I mean to hold it's bad. So, so what we're doing, you know, with seven, two, and we've, we've kind of made passes on it along the way is to try to narrow that gap so that you don't feel like you, you shouldn't feel like you need to have a legendary in order to do content, it's not how mm. we. That's not how we think of them. We don't think of them as this is a required legendary to do content. Right, specifically, like obviously you want to have a legendary yes. somewhere. But, yeah, uh, I mean, it's a nine, not a specific one. It's a nine forty item right now. I mean, yeah. it's it's always living at the top. So you we expect you to have them, mm. but which one you have, we do want it to be more of a player choice. Like we do want you to yeah. think that okay, well I have three. This one's power, but. I really like the ability on this, or I like this on this fight, so I'm going to use it. So um, I think those two things would have uh, would have resulted in, in, in a better experience. Hmm. 
And I think the way that they sort of change up, like depending on which legend, I actually kind of, I know this is kind of an unpopular opinion with the community, so apologies, <laughs> but I kind of like how the, the random element of it sort of like says, here, do do this thing now. So example, specific example that I'm thinking of uh, on my Mistweaver, um, I got the, the first one that I got was the Thunder Focus T pants. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, wow, this is a really good one, but now I need to rethink, like maybe I should be running a different talent so that I get Thunder Focus T a little bit more often. Maybe I should try Rising Thunder. Uh, okay, I actually just don't like the playstyle of Rising Thunder a little bit. I'm gonna try something else. Um, and then I got the um, the Unison Spalders, which is the Soothing Mist chaining thing. Yeah, yeah. And so then I was like, okay, so when I'm running Mythic Plus, now I'm gonna I'm gonna drop Life Cycles and take um, uh, I forget the name of the talent actually right now, but the one that makes you allows you to channel uh, Soothing Mist while you're moving. Right, right. Uh, and I'm like, okay, this is actually cool. Like I'm trying different builds now based on the the legendaries that I got. I I think that's cool. I um. I think it's cool too, and I think I think that's what. Hopefully, with narrowing it, that gives you yeah. players more choice. It does it does let them choose. Uh, we we also heard a lot of stories of somebody you know they get a utility legendary, they're mad, and then a week later they come back and they say, "Yeah, this is actually really awesome. <laughs> like, <laughs> I really like this yeah. thing, and I'm gonna have a hard time getting rid of it." But uh, but it's really like we don't that initial reaction should not be that, and we we'd like sure. to look at how to make it like we we really want these to be. Yeah. Oh wow! I got this item. This yeah. is awesome, and uh, some of them just weren't hitting. So, and also, obvi like obviously, based on the changes that are happening in seven two, um, we certainly recognize that there are there are players that aren't as dumb as me. I guess that will look <laughs> yes. and say, "Well, I got the wrong one, so I need to get the right one now." Sort of thing. So we're yeah. just trying to minimize that yep. gap between yep. them. Yep, completely. Cool. Um, another legendary question here from Talon, who asked, uh, in the subject of balancing between situational and universal legendaries, how do you see more universal, un universal? Yeah. universal legendaries <laughs> that have an added obstacle like the Fire Mage Pyro Bracers? Yeah, I think this is a, I think this is a good question. Like we, we want to make situational legendaries better in their situations than universal. Hmm. That's, that's one of our tuning goals. And I think we've talked about it publicly. Um, with the pyroblazers i actually think it's not a universal legendary like i think that yeah, is I a that's more of a situational like it is more of a i want to stand still so there are fights mm. where that is harder to do uh i can think of a lot of examples in in nighthold yeah you know, Spellblade, star augur star augur would Spellblade, be a good yeah. one yeah uh and other fights where it is possible and mm. then this this uh this legendary should shine yeah you know, more things like croesus or uh fights like that so so I think I think overall, we're, you know, again, we're making adjustments where we think that there's a there's a, a problem, but uh, in this case, situational should win. Okay, cool. Uh, question from Forks, mm -hmm. uh, who asked, uh, why do some legendaries have effects that should really be baked into a given spec to make it playable? Um, and probably the most common example of what uh forks is talking about here in fact i think forks is actually a hunter mm -hmm. uh is the the beast mastery shoulders that give uh two charges to dire beast right um what what what's going on with that because I, I we obviously we see a lot of feedback that are along the lines of i need this legendary because my spec is unplayable without it right what what are your thoughts on that so i think we do look at we look at legendaries as a little bit of a test to see hmm. what things work and what things don't and and some of the legendaries that you see it's not not test as in like there's a right answer to wrong answer but more sure. of a this is a little bit of an experiment like sure. we, we we think this is cool is it going to be something that players like is it something that's going to be uh received well uh and so some of them are a little bit of you know we could try this and what is what is the class play like with this uh and the nice thing about legendaries it's because it's not baked in and you know when you have when you have more choices with which legendaries you're choosing you can choose to use a different one if you don't like the play style. Hmm. Uh, but that being said, like we're looking at the legendaries that people have reacted very positively to. I think this is one, uh, like the, the Hunter one is definitely one that we, we look at and we're like, that does help. It smooths out the rotation a little hmm. bit. Uh, we like we like what it does. So um, when we do that, we <coughs> we basically look and, and see what we could do in the future to... Uh, uh, to maybe maybe wrap that in. Um, that's not a promise. That's just a each one that we like has a has that will have that test of like oh maybe this is something we do want to carry forward. So okay, cool. Uh, next question from uh, Mad One or possibly Madone, uh, who <laughs> asked uh, eligible. Well, this is a big question. Eligibility rules for personal loot trading are currently confusing. Uh, for example, set restrictions, off spec trinket restrictions, uh, downgrades may be untradeable due to higher eye level, etc. 
-hmm. Any thoughts on loosening or simplifying uh, personal loot trading rules? Yeah, I think, I mean, we, we agree. Uh, mm. We agree that it's confusing. We've been talking a lot about it internally. And the whole point of the trading rules was actually, uh, it, it depends on what kind of player you are, I think. So mm. if you're the player who's doing a lot of you know pug raiding, uh, we were really hoping the personal loot system was a way to protect you so that you know you were participating in the raid, you should get rewards from the raid. We mm. want to make sure that you know you feel like you're valuable, uh, like that your time was was valued. Um, and we thought protecting sets was one way to do that because mm. this is this is your reward. We didn't want you immediately having to trade that to somebody else if it happened to be a lower item level than something you already had. Maybe you had a legendary in that slot already, but it wasn't the one you were using that could cause sure. you to trade it. And then you kind of have this. Well, I want my four set, <clears throat> so it's, it yeah. kind of makes this weird dissonance. So and you don't want situations where people are being pressured into like. Hey, you can you can trade that yeah. to that guy, and it's a big upgrade for him. Like to exactly. sort of protect against basically like master looters being jerks or yeah, guild leaders being jerks. It's the so social on. it's the social pressure, and it's not even you know we we use an example like I I, I think back in Warlords I was actually raiding with an, with another guild that wasn't I was playing on a on a different character, hmm. and going to it I had that that immediate feeling that I think a lot of people have of I shouldn't take anything. Yeah. Cuz this is not my raid. Sure, yeah. You know, I feel like I'm I'm a burden to them if I'm taking loot mm. cuz I'm, you know, I'm participating in helping them out and we didn't we just thought that feeling we wanted trading to be a bonus, not a not a social pressure. Yeah. Um that all being said, it is really it is very confusing right now why you can't trade things. Yeah. One of the main reasons you can't trade things actually is uh bonus rolls. We don't let you trade bonus mm. rolls. Uh, because that is your token that we want you to spend on yourself. Yeah. Uh, and that has not been messaged. Actually, in seven two, I believe we have a we actually have a message on the on the piece of loot that you won through a bonus roll, just explaining to you that it can't be okay. traded because it was bonus rolled. I I think that ends up causing a lot of the confusion as well. Yeah. Well, and like thinking about like why not allow bonus rolls? Like you're saying, it should be your personal token, but also mm -hmm. like. Bonus roll tokens, they, they take a fair amount of uh, investment to get, whether it's order resources or gold. Um, I think it would it would be risky to open up the opportunity for people to be like, okay, everybody bonus roll this boss today because so and so needs their trinket or whatever. Yep. So and that's and that's also one of the reasons we do the uh, like the question mention um, having off spec gear. So mm. if you if there's a really good tank trinket and you don't usually play a tank. There is a pressure of like, well, our tank really needs this, so everybody switch your spec on this boss mm. and give him that loot. And we just we wanted to protect players from you know getting the loot themselves. But we also recognize again that if you're in a guild group and you want to trade a lot, yeah. like that's what that's kind of what your you know, how your guild works. Everything's open. Every there's no pressure. It's just people being nice to each other. It is a very confusing system right now. So we're looking at what we can what we can do to maybe loosen it up a little bit without mm. you know without violating our, our initial goals with yeah. it. Do you think that we've been overprotective at all of that? I wouldn't say we're overprotect. I don't think we're overprotective. I okay. think we're uh, we have really not done a good job of explaining why you can't trade things. Okay. So it's very hard to tell why you can't. Um, hmm. Another example we had, you know, we do the the set restriction. And in Arcway, there were uh, two items that were a set. There mm. was a trinket. I think it was a trinket and a ring, or maybe a trinket oh, and a neck. Oh, right. Uh, and because those were set pieces, they actually got marked as set, right. which meant that they couldn't be traded, yeah. which was not intentional. It was it was completely it was a just bug. Because of we, how the, just because of how it worked. Yeah. But that was even that was like another layer of like, wait, why can't I trade this? Right. And didn't explain it. So um, so okay. we're we're working on that. Okay. Cool. Um, speaking of actually, I think these, uh, at least one of these items actually is maybe one of them. No, sorry. They're not one that you were just talking yeah. about, but very similar. Yep. A uh, question here from Hunter's Lodge on Twitter who asked, uh, Melandris ring and Nod thumb ring have very cool effects. Uh, is that something you'd like to explore more further on? Not just rings. Yeah. I mean, we really, we like the system. We like having cool effects. Um, one of our, one of our goals of itemization going into it was how do we make items exciting again? Sure. Um, we had, you know, we, legendaries was, was one boat of that. Uh, <laughs> Warforged and Titanforged was another uh, discussion of like, wow, I just got a Titanforged item. I wasn't expecting that. This is cool. Hmm. Uh, and these were kind of the third axis of that. Like how can we, maybe we just bump some items up and take things that we, we see opportunities in. And our, our goal has always been with these. If the item makes sense for it to have an effect, we'll try to add an effect to it because hmm. we think, it's sort of 
you know, buying into the player's expectations. So there was the, yeah. the uh, one of my favorite items was the uh, spike collar chain, I think, in mm. uh, Karazhan, mm. which was spike collar chain, and it did damage when people hit you. It's like, okay, well, that makes sense. It's cool. Yeah. Uh, and it was just a little small effect. Uh, it made it made tanks feel a little bit cooler for getting it because they get hit a lot more, um, mm. but anybody could get it because it wasn't, it wasn't. It doesn't like in, count against the items yeah, budget or anything. It's not budgeted. It's just bonus. Um, and so we we thought that was cool. And and these were these were other good examples. The not thumb ring is mm. is a is a great ability. It's very useful. Uh, it's another thing to manage though. So you're kind of opting into it. But if you don't do it, it's still a really good ring. Yeah. So yeah, we will. This is something we're we're we don't want to do too much of because it makes item compare very difficult. But I think if we do it at the at the rate that we're doing it now, mm. I think it's a really cool thing for us yeah, to do. Every once in a while, there's a, one with a cool little bonus yeah. effect. If that's everything cool. had a bonus effect, it would be a, it'd yeah. be a mess. Um, one thing that's possibly worth clarifying as well, just while we're on the topic, um, is I've I've seen a lot of people talking about there's a there's a I think it's a ring that you can get that maybe it's a trinket that increases your auto attack damage, but like, yeah casters can get it as well yes. so just just for clarity the auto attack damage increase doesn't count against the item's budget it still has all the stats and everything yeah. on it so it's still valuable it's just yes it's a little bit weird that you get bonus da- bonus auto attack damage on your warlock but it's still a good item so it's it's a very good item and i think i think it's one of those uh one of those cases we have to be a little cautious of when mm. we make an item that is universal that feels like it's tailored to one spec even though like i use the the spike collar yeah uh example uh, it can change how exciting an item is for somebody who feels like it's not for them. So when right, a mage yeah. gets that item, they're not super happy about it. Yeah. But it doesn't count against your budget, so you should yeah. be okay doing it. But it's something we're you know yeah. we'll be cautious of. You could you could just ignore the equip text on totally. it and just look at the stats. Yep. But yeah, yep. Or go melee. Or go melee. Yeah, yeah it's fine. Melee mage. Go melee mage. It. Yep. <laughs> it's a thing. Uh, question here from Raichu who asked, uh, there's a lot of cool dungeon trinket concepts that add unique play styles to the game, but remain too weak compared to superior raid trinkets. Any plans to make dungeon trinkets more viable? Yes, I think is the answer. Uh, we are looking, we look at trinkets a lot. <laughs> we, <laughs> we look at trinkets quite a bit. And this is the first, I think with Legion, with Titan Foraging, War Foraging, which is part mm. of it but more importantly with mythic yeah mythic plus has meant that we just have more items at a level that we've never had before like yeah. we used to have imbalances imbalances between dungeon trinkets and it wasn't a big deal because you know you would scale out or we'd add another tier and then you'd eventually be into into things and we could have another chance with mythic plus we're we're trying to keep them all viable mm. we're trying to keep them all relatively equal in power uh which is new for us and it also means that everyone we add is a forever <laughs> right yeah so it was like okay well we have to add this and then think about okay yeah. what is this going to look like you know in the future and two yeah. more tiers or one more tier so i looted a horn of valor when i was leveling my paladin and now i'm still trying to get a horn I, of valor <laughs> i did the exact it was the first trinket i got was a horn of valor mm. and so I'm, I'm in the same boat uh and i would love to get another one but haven't seen one either uh so i think i think there's we we like dungeon trinkets being useful we like the feeling of like well i i should really do you know, I should I should really do Halls of Valor because mm. that still has that chance. Yeah. And if I see it on my on my Mythic Plus Keystone, that's an extra incentive to go do it. Um, but looking at trying to make sure that the other trinkets are all uh, relatively in, in line is, mm. is something we're always doing. Um, it's a very very complex problem though, so we're we're trying. Cool. Yeah. Um, I think we do have a question that's along the lines of trinkets a little bit later on that we can talk about sure. um, the balance of it a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but this question from Nakes, it's actually something that we were kind of talking about just a minute ago, um, who asked, uh, some of the dungeons have small sets, like two pieces. Any plans to add more like those? So we were kind of talking about the um, the set from, uh, I think it's Arcway and Court of Stars yep. uh, a little bit ago. Um, what are your thoughts on those? Do you like the little small, like, two-piece sets? I do. I do. I, I think they're cool. I think uh, in the same way, it gives you another goal, which is cool. So hmm. first, it has a cool effect on it, yeah. which, like I said before, we like, we like having items stand out. We like items looking opening up your dungeon journal for the first time and saying that's cool hmm. i wish i could get that and which you know if you're just looking at stats that it, you know you've been looking at stats for for a number right. of years this is another reason to do it but the other thing that these little sets do is they give you you get the one piece 
and then you realize, well, now I need to do get this other piece, and it gives you another another bonus on top of it to to go, you know, another reason to run Car Stars, another reason to run yeah. Arcway, uh, which we we really like having it kind of split into two either two areas or at least two different bosses. Um, so I think we'll see more of them. I think we, like I said, with the the powers, this is one of those we want to do it lightly. We don't want to mm. we don't want to spread these out heavily because it will it will make the game more confusing and the combinations between them but if we do it with a light touch i think these are really cool yeah um are there i'm trying to remember if i've seen it are there any like that in uh cathedral we i'm pretty sure we chose not to do it for cathedral okay um we've we've talked about we i don't know if they have to be dungeons either we've talked about possibly doing doing a little bit of small sets and raids Hmm, um that'd be cool it's it's one of those things we look at it's and as i said with the powers it's something we look at the items themselves and say mm. is this does this you know is there a cool story here that we can tell is this yeah. a does this item have more fantasy that we'd like to pull out of it and then if we do then we can you know figure out what those are cool uh, another set related question from no skulls who asked uh, have you ever thought of adding dungeon sets back into the game to help players still tr- struggling excuse me to get their tier set um, so kind of like think way back to classic like there was the tier zero like the Valor set, the, um, yeah. the Magister's set, stuff like that. Um, have you ever thought about re-implementing something like that? We have. Uh, it, it, I think every expansion, we talk about it. You know, okay. like, is this the expansion for the dungeon set? And <laughs> and uh, part of you know the class hall order set actually mm-hmm. that that was in the game was it, it. We didn't. We weren't trying to power it the same as as the other sets, but mm-hmm. we were. We wanted to be one of the sources to come from dungeons, which is you know completing all the dungeon, uh, killing all the bosses in, sure. in the dungeons gives you one of the pieces. But I think we again, this is one of those we like the idea, the challenge, and we're seeing you know a, a similar discussion right now between uh, tier nineteen and tier twenty. Mm. I, th- I think. I think maybe we'll talk about it later. Mm. Uh, then we kind of have that same issue with with dungeon sets, right? Where at what point is a dungeon set better? Is it, you know, I take the, which piece from the dungeon set versus which pieces from the, from the raid set. That's the complication of it. Mm. Um, Especially with mythic plus, because that's... then you can end up with a dungeon set. That's a higher item level than your raid set. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And, and it could be dominant and those interactions, uh, we can, we can do it. I think, I think yeah. we'd like to do it. We want to find the right way to do it. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, cool. I'm sure we will see it sometime in the future. Sure. Cool. Um, a question from Artunius DPS who said, uh, "Raid zones without tier sets have felt unrewarding to me. Have you liked that design?" So um, obviously, at the start of Legion, there was uh, Emerald Nightmare didn't have a tier set, and then Trial mm-hmm. of Valor obviously didn't have a tier set. Start of Warlords, uh, High Mall didn't have a tier yep. set. Um, what What are your thoughts on that? So I think I don't think it's a precedent. I think is what I would say. Um, okay. We don't. We a lot of times with when we look at the first few raids, it's we're looking at what the player is doing mm. for that for that first experience. So with Legion, your first experience is really leveling your artifact, and you're getting all of these powers alongside mm. of your artifact. And so we looking at unlocking all these powers and also collecting tier sets that were going to give you bonuses. It just felt like a lot. There's a lot of different in. bonuses, especially yeah. like people are getting their first legendaries around that time as well. Yep, exactly. Okay. Um, and even Nighthold, we were a little bit worried about how, you know, how far along people would be mm. in their artifact and whether or not it would be competing as well. And, and some of the set bonuses in, in Nighthold were intentionally a little bit simpler just to make sure that we weren't overloading with, with information also with legendaries mm showing up you know there's just a lot of things that are competing for your attention so so i don't think it was a it wasn't a uh we like having raid zones without tier sets it was more of a these specific ones that we chose to do didn't have them Mm. um i think in the future we could we could look at adding some things to that maybe there there are two sets maybe they're you know Mm. more bumped up items instead we didn't do that for nightmare but we could have or trial of valor Mm. um i think there's a lot of things we can play with there cool a uh, question from Knees, who asked, uh, are you still thinking about letting us wear Tier 19 two-piece and Tier 20 four-piece in 7-2? I think you kind of alluded to this question earlier, because um, obviously there are six pieces yep. in tier sets in Legion, um, which was something we we did because of legendaries, basically. We wanted you to be able to wear your two legendaries and still also have your four-piece. Um but that does also mean that you could theoretically wear two pieces of Tier 19 yep. and still have your Tier 20 four-piece. How do we feel about that? Um, cautious, I think. Uh, like we, okay. we, 
we want to give the players space. We want to let them choose what's best. And I think, you know, because of the legendary uh, competing with those slots, mm. it does it does make sense for us to increase it. I think that the where we might make changes is if we see the tier 19 two piece being universally better regardless of item level. Mm. Um, if that becomes dominant, we may take a look and and try to make adjustments to the 19 piece specifically. Um, but that's you know we don't have we don't have plans for that right now. That's not a, something that we're we're planning on doing. It's more of a this is an option in case we see problems. But uh, I actually think that there's something there's something cool about letting players do this. And we're, this is a little bit of an experiment because of that, but, um, I would love to get feedback about, I'd love to see how people, you know, once, once it's out and people have had a chance to play through it, um, this is, you know, we'd, we'd love to just hear what, what people's thoughts are. Cool. And uh, here's actually a, a relatively yeah. similar question, uh, from Daniel Navin on Twitter who asked, uh, is the assassination tier 20 set bonus placeholder? It's not worth equipping unless every single piece has mastery and crit. And we've actually seen a lot of questions like not even necessarily, uh, that are giving specific feedback about the, the set bonuses and wh where they are at the moment, but more just asking, is this placeholder? Is this final? Is this sure? Uh, did you just put something there because <laughs> you needed to have the item? Exist? We just need to write text. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, I think for, I think one thing to understand is when, you know, when seven, two goes live, hmm. two will, will not be open yet. Right. So, um, and I don't think we've really talked about that much. Yeah. It's, uh, I think it is a, a good thing to sort of get, cause we've obviously been seeing a lot of people sort of speculating about patch release date like it's yeah. up on the background downloader now what does that mean for when the right. patch is going to come out um if you find out please let me know <laughs> um, but uh, I'm sure there's a spreadsheet somewhere yeah all of that uh but it our raid design our, our our design philosophy for raid release in legion is that they're not tied to patches it's yep. literally like we will the, the content for the raid obviously has to be delivered to the game client in a patch yep. but just because patch 7.2 is called tomb of sargeras does not mean that patch 7.2 is the release of Tomb of Sargeras. Right. Like we're, we're pacing out raids based on when is the right time for a raid to come out, not when a, a patch happens to release. Yeah, and I mean, also the fantasy of, you know, we haven't been yep. Broken Shore in a while, so hmm. getting to Tomb is not, it's not an easy, yeah. you know, it's not an easy thing to just walk in and just go to the raid entrance. So, yeah. although I'm going to see a video of a person going to Broken Shore day one and going to the raid entrance. Yeah, it's probably. Fine. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of stuff you have to do on Broken Shore mm -hmm. before, uh, before you can, you know, get into the raid, yeah. Uh, and so, a lot of these set bonuses that you guys are seeing, uh, they are they're not. I wouldn't say they're placeholder. I don't like using the word placeholder because sure. like, we really want to get feedback on them. Like right. this, this, this is this is good feedback. I'd like to see, you know, more feedback on mm -hmm. these set bonuses. Uh, we have an, we have the ability to change it. There'll probably be a small patch, and there will be a small patch before Tomb opens. Okay, kind of in the same vein as what we did with seven one five. Okay, uh, so I think that we can. Uh, we have some we have some room to, to tune things. We have some room to uh, to change things if they're not working. Yeah. Uh, and and this is uh, this is one of those th one of those things we could yeah. take a look at and, and see where see where it is. Yeah. So basically, summarizing all of that, um, yep. There's there's another there there will be another patch for some some tuning uh, before the tomb uh, release of tomb or around the release of tomb. We don't know the exact time frame of when that might be yep. at this point. Um, because again, it's kind of based on when is the right time for the raid to come out. And that's kind of based on how our players progressing through a uh, night hold and so on. So yep. we can't give a, a, anything even close to an estimate on when that might be at this point. But all that said, feedback still very valuable because yes. we can still make changes to these items before Absolutely. they actually get into your hands. Yep. Cool. Uh, next question from Mori, uh, who asked, uh, are there plans to make more exciting tanking trinkets in Tomb of Sargeras. And tank trinkets have been getting a lot of discussion lately because um, I think a lot of people were sort of, uh, they, they felt that the ones in Nighthold, uh, apologies, but they felt that the ones That's in fine. Nighthold felt yeah. a little flat. Sure. They weren't they weren't as exciting and they were looking more to things like even the unstable arcano crystals. Like, well, right. okay, well this just has a lot of stats on it and that's more useful to me than um, the, like an on-use effect that gives me a a bubble for 50k or something yeah and i think when we look at tanking and healing trinkets specifically mm. it's hard to compete right now with with our passive ones mm. and that's we want to make sure that you know what what tanks and healers like to have is you know kind of another button that they can use when when they have a button on a trinket that they can use they want to be able to rely on that to actually help them um, it's not just a little percent increase so yeah we're specifically looking at on use trinkets and making those on use trinkets for tanks and healers 
better than we have in the past. We want to make sure that they do feel impactful, that when you press it, you mm. you recognize that you've, you know, you've done something to help your survivability or, or push out some more healing. And right now there hasn't been a real good reason to use those because of, yeah. you know, passive, not even the Arcano Crystal, which is very good, but hmm. other just passive trinkets yeah. tend to tend to overwhelm them. So this is this is on our radar. Um, we're always, as I said before, always talking about trinkets. It's yeah. a nonstop conversation about yeah. which you know how do we do it, and we we recognize that for tanks, uh, we haven't uh, we haven't quite hit the the mark where they're really excited about things. So I think we'll see we'll see better ones in tomb, and and we'll uh, we'll make sure that they're they're tuned up so that they feel good. Cool. And the uh, what you're saying about the on use effects, it may be worth just bringing up. Uh, something that uh, when we had Ian on here last, actually, uh, yep. a few weeks ago, um, he was talking about how, like, for a DPS, we kind of need to be pretty cautious with the on-use trinkets uh, because you usually tend to line those up with all your all of your other DPS cooldowns as well. If you're a tank who pops every single defensive cooldown at the same time, that's very much the wrong thing yes, to do. You kind of want to space those out. Yep. So it doesn't... It's not as much of an issue of, well, we need to make sure that this 50k bubble isn't actually a 75k bubble if they use it at the same time as Divine Protection or something. Yeah. Um, no, I think that's exactly right. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Next question here from Avero. Mm -hmm. um, and you actually kind of mentioned this earlier, but it's worth uh, going into this actual question. Uh, do you like the power that enchants and gems offer after the secondary stat rebalancing? They just feel so meaningless with how little power they offer. Um, so obviously after the, the secondary stats were rebalanced, the values that were actually on the gems and enchants didn't change. Right. Where do we feel those are at this point? So I think I think we, you know, we tuned against what we thought they would be uh in, in the world we live in now, we actually tune them against that world, even though mm. we we came out with secondary stats being more powerful than we thought. So it's it's a little weird to say, but I think in Legion, they were over budget. We actually, we looked at them as like, well, if you don't have these, you know, it's a, it's a pretty significant decrease. And when we took a, when we, you know, did all the secondary stat rebalancing, I think we brought them a little bit more in line to where we expect them to be. Uh, we, one of the examples that I'd use is actually food. Uh, mm. We recently looked at, and this is talking about enchants and gems but yeah with uh feasts specifically hmm. uh feasts were uh primary stat where all the secondary stat food was you know or all the other food was secondary stat right and the secondary stat food would just dominate all the feasts because of that of that uh uh, imbalance and they still do <laughs> like, we didn't bring them down enough to where that matters so right um so i think we look at we look at enchants and gems we also know that over the course of the expansion enchants and gems will sort of diminish in power mm. um you saw that in with uh warlords too where we introduced purple gems in in warlords to right to make up for it so that at some point okay well if i'm putting a gem on this it's only worth X number of item levels, well, that can, a purple gem can come out. We can come up with a, a newer version that makes it better and pushes it up. So uh, I think that's still something we will we will likely do uh, in, in a future uh, future expansion, or excuse me, future patch. Future patch. In a future yeah. expansion, we will have better gems. In a future gems. world, there will be better gems. <laughs> we'll go back to Legion and I probably a new gem. <laughs> I think I commit, commit to having better gems in a future expansion as well. I think we'll probably <laughs> do that. But You heard it here first. <laughs> getting them those it's the scoop those epic leaks out. <laughs> yeah yeah a uh, question here from mezzo who asked uh, do you believe secondary stats still add depth to gameplay beyond hoping for the right drops uh, as late as mr pandaria a single spec had haste builds versus mastery builds uh, now most specs favor one stat no matter the build so i think there's there's a couple things here uh so we talked a lot about secondary stat balancing yep uh and we when we look at you know the the history here of having haste builds versus mastery builds, that was uh, I think is a little bit of a misnomer, um, and I actually think that where we are now, it's I think our community is better at evaluating stats. Mm. I think that they um, I remember back in in mop days or, or earlier you would end up seeing a priority list of what yeah. you wanted to get like oh crit is my best okay cool now I get a a number with a two digit decimal associated with it that explains how good this is compared to this. And that also, you know, how that changes over item level. So, or how it changes over item level or how it changes with other secondary stats and all that interaction is very well understood by our theory crafters. And I think that the build part of it has gone away or at least the feeling that there was a build mm. has gone away because the information has gotten so better. Like there is probably still a haste build and a mastery build for DPS, but the community knows which one is better. Sure. Um, they may not have known that back then. They may have 
theorized about which one, but I think they have much yeah. better tools now to do it. Um, I think that in the, like this is a, this is a dream. Like we love this idea. We mm. love the idea that that you can spec your character different ways. We talked about player agency before. Yeah. That's a big part of what we think we're missing in Legion is having more of those choices. Um, but it's not a reality in in our mm. current game. So uh, it's a it's a really good point. It's something that we. Again, we'd, we'd love to live in that world, and we're trying to find a way to do that. But where we are right now, it's very hard for anybody to say, well, this build is as viable as this build if yeah. there's even a slight in, you know, a slight difference in power between those two. Yeah, and like even even when there are multiple ways to build a character at the moment, like I was talking about Mistweaver earlier, yeah. um, it's kind of, uh, you kind of want crit in some situations, you want haste in some situations, you want versatility in some situations as well. And there's it's a little bit up in the air for, sure. for healers especially, like... It's, what's actually the the best way to go but even then it's like okay you want this build for mythic plus you want this build for raids where you're doing lots of raid healing yep and you want this build for pvp sort yeah. of thing which i guess doesn't actually matter anymore but these would be the stats that if you were doing pvp still and that's, if, if that's still matter sure PvP. and that's and that's i think the i think what you said is 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 correct like i think healers have had a great world that they live in where mm. they can they have more choice between those things you know they can choose whether they want to do faster heals yeah. and burn a little bit more mana or yeah. whether they they want to do crit um or mastery which are very much a choice for a lot of healers you know would do you want to be the holy paladin who stands you know and and does stands in with other people and and heals them for more or do you want to be the uh resto shaman who heals more for low low targets which may not you know burn the meters yeah. but it's actually going to be something that is very useful for your team hmm. and that's a great choice hmm. we don't see that same choice in dps spec specifically and that's what i was talking about before um but we'd love to find a way to do that cool uh question here from excuse me i'm apparently unable to speak properly today <laughs> question here from sense of wonder who asked uh any news about the seven two solo challenges it's something I was really looking forward to, but no news so far. Um, so this is one of those questions I kind of mentioned earlier. It's not really an itemization focused question, yeah. but seven two solo challenge. I actually saw a few people asking about this one as well, so I wanted to make sure to include this one. Sure. What's up with that? Yeah, they're in seven two. Um, there are uh, very difficult, <laughs> <laughs> nice, like very difficult uh, challenges for your artifact that uh, unlock appearances for that artifact. Cool. Uh, that's part of, uh, I believe it's unlocked with the Mage Tower building that you get. Okay. So you know when you when you go to Broken Shore, you're you're establishing your base, and part of that is you know building buildings on the base as a as a region. Uh, one of those buildings unlocks the ability to to attempt these challenges. So um, they they don't they're not normalize so your gear matters mm. so if you can't do it right away come back when you're when you have a little bit better gear and try it again uh but i i they are uh they're going to be rough for a lot of people early on and i think there's going nice. to be a lot of people who you know walk in day one and uh will realize how uh how difficult they are so nice and one other thing that i wanted to mention at this point um is that next week's q a we're actually going to have ryan schwader on we're actually so we're doing a q a next week uh, and we're going to have Ryan Schwader on, yeah. who is the content lead for Patch 7.2. So we'll be able to talk at length about oh, yeah. things like everything that's on the Broken Shore, the building mechanic you were just talking about, the solo challenges, anything along those lines. So all of the content-related uh, questions, keep those, keep an eye out. We will, we will have uh, information on how to submit those and where to submit those very, very soon. Yeah. Uh, next question from Zefe, who asked, uh, Ever consider revisiting the double-traded relics idea? Uh, and only allowing throughput relics to have a secondary utility trait and vice versa. This would broaden relic choice across the board instead of having to focus on your one to two choices per spec. Uh, so a little bit of background there. There was a mechanic in 7.2, um, I believe it was through Order Hall Research, uh, yep. that made it so that when a relic dropped for you, it would have a second randomized trait. And there was a little bit of restriction on what that randomized trait could be, but it was basically relics now can have two traits, and the second one is more or less random. Um, we decided not to go ahead with that system. Yep. Um, so, and since we since we announced that we we were replacing that, and it, the the new uh, order hall research is uh, something like you can get bonus artifact power from world quests, I believe. Yep. Um, but since we decided to not go ahead with that system, a lot of people are saying, okay, yeah, but actually we wanted the second trait. Yeah. So, uh, what are our thoughts on relics and uh, uh, Zefe's suggestion of only allowing a like one utility and one throughput. I think it's a good suggestion. Right. I think mm -hmm. it was one of the things we, we had talked about when we had, we were looking at the system kind of late in seven too. Mm. Uh, we really liked the idea too. You mm. know, we, that's the reason we did it. Uh, 
and we were looking at it and you know one of the options we could have done was was go to a more utility as the second um but we think that there's there's another piece here of mm. having giving players more choice in what they get uh and we wanted to we wanted to look at that a little bit more and say well maybe maybe it's not random and that was a lot of the feedback we got was uh, mm. uh it felt too random it felt like i didn't have control over it which we agreed with mm. um, there's some other reasons of uh just design reasons we looked at having a second ability right away on every relic in the game even though this research you don't you might be a fresh character or you might be sure, somebody yeah. who's still a couple weeks out and you know you're trying to min max when you get that research so there's a lot of system things that we were looking at and just not not liking where we were going um but i think i think this is this is a this idea is still very fresh in our minds it's mm. something we're we're actively still working on of how can we bring this back and in a way that that gets players uh you know a little bit a little bit more choice maybe and uh a little bit more uh control over having the one that they want yeah yeah i think it's it's possibly worth sorry <coughs> it's fun. excuse me i'm apparently dying <laughs> Um, it's possibly worth mentioning at this point as well, and this is something that we tried to get across in the post when we actually said that we were going to not go ahead with the system. Well, if I die on air right now, would that be it's, I'll just take over. It'll be fine. <laughs> you okay? Excuse me. No, I'm fine. I you just good? got something caught in my throat at the moment. Um, but anyway, one of the things we were talking about in the post is that the reason, the biggest reason that we decided not to go ahead with, or one of the biggest reasons, I should say, yeah. that we decided not to go ahead with it in 7.2 is because we felt that there's a lot more that could be done with relics. Exactly. And so adding that system would have kind of preempted the ability to add more cool stuff to relics later exactly. on. Exactly. I think that's that's a really good point. And it was one, you know, you'd have this one <coughs> one research that once it was completed, every relic in the game would have two. And right. it didn't really feel like, you know, you'd have that one moment of getting it, but then the rest of it would just be two relics. So uh, so we thought we could do we thought we could do a little bit more. So Okay. Cool. Uh, another relic question here from mm -hmm. Pravak, who asked, uh, why do relics get deleted or removed when replacing them? This makes it very hard to compare and test which is actually better. Being able to swap them out would really help in being able to see which one to use. It's been a common question basically since Legion launched. Yeah. Um, what are our thoughts on it? So we, when we made artifacts, there mm. were, there's, I'll give two reasons. Okay. <laughs> One is, you know, we wanted the artifact to feel like it was infused with power, right? We wanted we wanted the feeling that you were taking things from the world and, and just sort of and smashing enhancing it, in it into it, and yeah. and that's the uh, that's you know that's that's the feeling we wanted. Mm. But I think the more important part is, you know, when we look at we have systems that let you kind of customize on the fly. We have talents already. Mm. Uh, we have in some ways we have gear as well. Like you can you can swap gear all the time. We didn't want to give, you know, another uh, axes to customization that you felt like you had to to manage each time. So in the case where you're being able to swap them out and try different things, I think is a great great thing to look for. Maybe there's a way that we can do that. Hmm. But on specific, we you know the the feeling that I have a bag full of relics. Yeah, I go to a boss and I take these three and I put those in, yeah. and the next boss I take those out and I put these three in. It felt like more of a burden, and this was just like, okay, well, I get a relic, I can compare them at that point, I make a choice, and then and then I'm good, and I can yeah. I can keep playing. And so, um, it's not every you know, it's not a thing we look at for every systems, but when we're looking at relics, I think that was yeah. an important piece of it. And there's like you say, there's already a couple of layers there. So if it was sort of like, um, okay, guys, we got to this boss, and I've just been clearing trash. Hang on a second, because I've I've got my AOE talents, <laughs> yeah. I've got my AOE trinkets, I've got my AOE relics. Hold yep. on, let me change these three different things before we pull the boss. That would be kind of annoying. Yeah, it would be. So, okay. A uh, question from Sharon Cal on Twitter, <laughs> who asked, uh, "Any plans to use old, lost, or unavailable appearances instead of reskinning reskinning the same things for items in patches?" So I think um, referring to, like, uh, we'll come out with a, a, a tier set. Um, and then for uh, another chess piece, we'll use a, just a recolor of that tier set. What are your thoughts on using um, some old appearances that aren't available anymore uh, instead of reskinning things? Yeah, so with with uh, patch seven two, we actually have the transmog set UI now. Yep. So when we were going through and you know building out all the data for that, we realized we were missing a lot of pieces, <laughs> which the community is like, well, yeah, and yeah. we knew too, but we didn't know 
we hadn't actually, you know, gone through and did the exercise. It wasn't like a like, giant list of it. Yeah. yeah. And now we have that list. Okay. okay. <laughs> so <Cool>. now like, <laughs> we've, we have that list and, and that's not like all on us. That's on the community too. They've been an awesome uh, partner with us for hmm. figuring out which things are missing and, and yeah. letting us know that, Hey, this is, we're still missing this piece. I'd love to have this for this set. And I encourage them, you know, you guys, please keep sending us those. We yep. look at them. We, we keep track of them. Um, and so we kind of have a, we have a, a I'd like to say a backlog to use a mm. uh, nice producer terms, uh, a backlog of, of, uh, appearances that we want to put back into the game. Mm. Uh, we have to find the right place to do that. So right. there's some, a lot of different ideas, like depending on how many we, we end up with, you know, we might look for a whole new system that lets, that lets us introduce them, mm. or it could be, you know, having items that we need to give out, uh, have a one of these appearances that that works um there's a little bit of weirdness if you know you go to patch 72 with you know all this cool armor it looks looks really great and then mm. you get a recolor of a vanilla piece <laughs> of gear it might not be what you're what yeah. you're expecting so there's a there is a there's a way for us to deliver it so that the people who really want it feel you know excited for getting it and it's not causing confusion elsewhere so okay. so but it's something we we uh really really passionate about cool uh question here from the Harley X eight XL eight eight three N uh on Twitter who asked, uh, can we get heirlooms itemized for seven two to work to level one hundred and ten? So yes, uh not for seven two. So okay. sorry. Time to jump the gun with my yes, but uh <laughs> So yes, but what I meant was not no. what I meant was no, <laughs> but I said yes. No, the uh yes heirlooms, okay. yes one ten. Not quite seven two. Okay. Uh, I'd like to say shortly after. Okay. Um, I think that this is this is on our on our list of things. Like we we recognize that players love them. We love them too. We mm. want to collect them. We want to get them going up to one ten. Yeah. Um, and so uh, uh, we'll, you'll you know the usual. Stay tuned. We'll have more mm. information about it in the future. But for right yeah. now, uh, we just like to say yes. We we will do it. And I think it's uh, just something to mention on that. Like now knowing that we're going up to artifact knowledge level 40 in 7.2, um, and it's going to take a little bit of time to get there. So shortly after 7.2, I think makes a lot of sense because then you get your heirlooms on your, your, on your 100 character, you level up to 110, and then you can get those compendiums jump straight to like artifact knowledge 35, and then you'll be able to catch up a lot faster. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Whereas if you were to do that, if we were to encourage you to do that right now, it'd be kind of almost a disservice in, in a certain way. Where yeah. It's like, yep. maybe you should actually wait a little bit longer. Artifacts have kind of, you know, really extended how long players are playing their main characters mm. with, you know, so if you are a one character kind of person, there's been a lot of content for you, but if you're an alt player, it has been a little bit overwhelming. And so I think this is like, we're, we're now at the time where we can say, okay, well now, now is a good alt time. Come back and, yeah. and play different characters. And the class campaigns are so awesome for mm. each class. Like they, yeah. I'm a big alt fan, so um, just going through each storyline and giving that different level up experience and mm. all the artifact lines that are different, yeah. like it's it's really cool. So yeah. heirlooms, heirlooms, yes, yes, heirlooms, yes, heirlooms, yes, but no, but yes, <laughs> but not now, <laughs> but yes. Um, all right, question here. Um, we've we've talked about this, uh, I think, a fair amount already. So I don't yeah. know if we have too much to add. Uh, but I'll go ahead and read it off anyway. A question from Imperiax, who said, uh, why is Unstable Arcano Crystal only available once every two to three months, still so over budget and one of the best trinkets for nearly everyone? This is one of those uh, trinket tuning that always mm. you know, comes back and we look at it of, okay, well, we probably, we came out over budget. I think we we reduced it in 7.1 or 7.15. I can't remember which. Mm. Uh, we're really cautious and and I know I'm, it's going to be a lot of people that are immediately going to tell me like it doesn't seem like you're cautious but mm. we're we're very cautious and we try to be very cautious about taking an item that people think is really good and then making it you know making pushing it, it all the way down yeah. to where they don't want to use it anymore yeah. uh for two reasons one is the guy who has it and is like well this is now crap and i have to find a new yeah. trinket to to I've you been know, disenchanting to, all my other trinkets exactly so. and i don't have it yeah uh and the other is the guy who already de'd it mm. right and or he uh he was looking at it as like this is the thing I want to get, and then he finally gets it, and we nerf it right out from under him. So, yeah. those are those are both not good experiences, and yeah. so we we try to be cautious with it. We want so it's still over budget, but hopefully it's not like you know, well, it's something we're we'll still look at if we need to make changes. We will, but uh, yeah. we got to be cautious with it. Okay. Uh, only have time for maybe one or two more questions. Okay. So here's this one from Gambado who asked, uh, do you worry that because of the Warforge slash Titanforge system, the emphasis of character progression has moved from effort done to being lucky? So one of the themes that we've been talking about uh, through this whole Q&A so far is like 
trying to find ways to sort of give that player agency back into yep. the mix. Um, do you have any thoughts on Warforge and Titanforge and how that factors in? Sure. Yeah, I think Warforge and Titanforge are both the the system was intended for you feel like this is a bonus, right? Like mm. we we don't tune the game around Warforge gear. We don't tune the sure. game around Titanforge gear. The actual cases that were coming up were, you know, hey, I'm a heroic raider hmm. and my friend wants me to go to a normal raid, but there is nothing I'm going to get from it. Right. Nothing on that and no no chance of getting any item. And so he said, well, okay, well, what if there's a chance? Yeah. You know, then there's a smaller reason. Smaller chance, but still a chance. It yeah. should be a small chance. It should feel it should feel like a, a, a nice moment when it happens, but it shouldn't be something that I am I have to get in order for it to be good. Uh, and that's, I, I'm not sure, like, the, uh, we're still looking at the tuning. Like, maybe the tuning is off so that it's happening more than it should. Mm. Um, but the intention, if it feels like you have to be lucky to do it, then there's probably something we should, we should look at. And, you know, we've gotten this feedback before and we, we are looking at what we can do. Um, but I think the, you know, the overall message is you don't need it. Mm. <laughs> it's all bonus. Um, if you're doing, you know, a heroic raid and nothing in the heroic raid is an upgrade unless it's Warforged or Titanforged, you know, there is, there is mythic ahead of it. There's, yeah. you know, mythic dungeons on, on the side. Those also can provide progression. Um, but if you want to keep doing heroic raiding, there's always a chance that you can get an upgrade. And we, we like that feeling. Okay, cool. Um, this is going to be our last question okay. for today. Uh, it comes from Unariel, who asked, uh, there are armors in the game like Naisha's that look absolutely amazing. Uh, any plans on making that available to players would really not mind some Calderai looking gear? Yeah, we'd love to. Uh, mm. I think this is one of the ones... We we always look at uh, bosses and we say what would be cool for players to get. A lot of times the the encounter guys come to to the item team and say, "There's a really cool shoulders. Mm. We should drop these." Okay, mm. cool. Like let's let's get a player made and let's let's actually adjust the art to make sure that they can be equipped by players. Um, this is an example. We will look into this and whether it's possibility. Um, but we as much as we can, we like having that the art from the creature, the art from you know that really. Mm. Uh, personifies the 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 raid that you're doing having that be something you can carry back and you feel connected yeah. to in some way is super cool and that that is a great ar armor set that that i could see putting in so I, awesome we'll see if it's possible cool well thanks very much for coming on and answering yeah. these questions today i think we uh, we actually got through quite a few of them um so yeah thanks very much cool thanks josh yeah it's great um as a reminder like we said earlier uh, next week we will be back with another q a we're gonna have uh, ryan schwader on uh, to talk about patch 7.2 content so that should be pretty cool um so yeah keep an eye out for the announcement of that uh and where to submit your questions um again thanks uh matt for being here thanks so much everybody at thanks, home guys. for tuning in and we'll see you next week